The pinnacle of personal human transport technology. Distilled down to a single wheel, a motor, and batteries, the EUC is arguably the world's most agile and efficient means of personal transportation, and the InMotion V13 Challenger boldly claims to be a huge leap forward in this already innovative field of personal mobility tech, using adjectives like unprecedented, sophisticated, and masterpiece, while calling the V13 the fastest electric unicycle ever built. But does the InMotion V13 make promises it can't keep, or will the V13 usher in an EUC era where performance, quality, and safety finally come together? What's up guys, Jimmy Chang here with Andrew and in today's video we are going to be giving you guys our thoughts on the InMotion V13, the world's smartest electric unicycle. It's a sweet wheel, it's amazing, great balance, great design, but there is definitely flaws. And we're going to be going over those flaws, let's keep riding, it's a beautiful day out. At our next stop we're going to be talking about the things that we love about this EUC. We need Mike Leahy here to jump over this log. <laughs> yes, we are no Mike Leahy. We're not going to be jumping over this log, but we're going to be sitting here and talking. I think this is probably the most refined electric unicycle that we've ridden. You can tell it feels very high end. There are no exposed wires, abnormal gaps. Fit and finish is good, and they put thought into making this an actual vehicle worthy of the road. The materials that they use to make this feels higher quality. But just the shell. It's so rugged and so durable. It, it does not feel cheap at all. And I don't know about you guys, but we have had a very wet and cold winter. That's why we haven't been able to ride all that much. But when we do ride, you always worry about water damage. This wheel, however, you don't have to worry as much. It has water resistance rating. It's IPX5, which should withstand light sprays of water. This EUC, it's pretty narrow. It's it nice and tapered rather than just straight boxy. A lot of people still want to upgrade on these pads, but these are by far the best pads that I've seen on electric unicycle stock. The screen is touch sensitive and you're able to make all the adjustments you need to on this screen. So you don't have to have your phone with you. You don't have to have an app. I do like these metal bars. These handles are roll bars. They're solid. They look great. The orange accents are great. Holes in here, you can see they're threaded. So you can actually put on accessories and attach attachments and then you have these extra handles here to help pick it up very nice finish Got handles up here handles down here so the fender too is really nice this thing is on there solid and provides great protection the light is really bright and it looks great it's a good looking light you can hear that fan kicking in i love this trolley handle go trolley handles are very flimsy they feel like they're gonna snap off at any moment. Solid trolley handle, easy to use. I'm six feet tall. It's nice and comfortable rather than me hutching over it. In addition to the suspension, this big wheel helps to soak up bumps, potholes that we've gone over. Now, one of the knocks against in motion wheels in the past is it's just too many parts, too many components, which makes maintenance, tire changes a headache. In this case, it's a modular design. Changing a tire is actually quite simple because of this design that you should be able to do it pretty quickly. Getting it ready to get off the whole shell to access the tire for a tire change, he was able to do it in five minutes. The company has made a strong emphasis on safety with this electric unicycle. The InMotion V13 Challenger is supposedly one of the safest wheels because of all the safety measures that they've taken. From the thicker gauge wire to the redundant hall sensors, the smart BMS, that gives us peace of mind that we're riding something that is one of the safest electric unicycles on the road. That being said, electric unicycles have their inherent dangers. And we're gonna talk more about this at our next stop, the things that we don't like about this wheel because it's not perfect. This electric unicycle is tall. Oh, so tall. It's stable, smooth. We're gonna ride out of this brush and when we hit the road, get to our next stop, we'll talk about the things that we don't like about it. 
that's what I'm talking about. Snapping ankles like that. Muddy. You're high up. And I don't want to fall in that water. No matter the water resistance rating, you don't want to dunk it. This wheel's not ready to be baptized yet. So one of the cons is in wet weather, muddy weather, snowy weather, your feet and your pedals are going to get wet and muddy. And that's what's happened here in the bottom of my shoes. And uh, these pedals, they have some little studs on them, but there's no grip or spikes. And so they can get a little slippery. This is a big heavy wheel. One handed action. All right, here at Freshly Charged, we don't baby our wheels, right? I may not be the most extreme rider. Andrew likes to ride fast, but we do like to get a little dirty. That road is super smooth now. It's a lot better now. Yeah. A couple things that I've noticed just off the bat, just cruising on that road is this wheel is very stable, even at high speed. You're just feeling like butter because it's so heavy and so big. It just feels really stable. Yeah, that's the fastest I've ever seen Jimmy ride an electric unicycle. He was going 40 miles plus. Normally he's a casual cruiser at 30, 35 miles per hour, but he's going over 40. My internal uh, speedometer tells me to slow things down once I hit 35. But uh, in this case, this wheel is so big and smooth, it encourages you to go faster. Because it's so big, I liken it a lot to one of my favorite video games of all time, and that was Mario Kart. And you know, whenever you pick Bowser or Kong, you're just so big. Once you get going, it's fast and it's steady. The nice thing though about the V13 is we set the suspension early on to our liking and we haven't really had to change it since for two reasons. Number one, because it's done a pretty good job and we haven't really felt the need to change it. And then number two, it's kind of a pain in the butt to change it. So that's why we won't change it. But uh, yeah, it's good. I like the suspension. Perfect for these roads. The nice thing with this handle is you can actually grab onto it too. Just like on the Sherman, you can grab onto it if you need to emergency brake. Very handy, not just for lifting and transporting, but also for emergency braking. I like it. And it protects the wheel when it crashes. Having a good time out here. Let's talk about the things that we don't like about this electric unicycle. So let's set her down for a sec. There's no real kickstand on this. You can use this kill switch here to deactivate it. When you push on the kill switch, you gotta keep it pushed down. So you just rest it right there on those bars and it works. It's not super steady, a little bit of jiggle and it'll, it'll go. Putting it down like that can scratch up the orange paint. What you can do is put something protective on the outside of that bar. What do you not like about this thing? Not easy to lift in and out of cars. We bought side. a ramp specifically for our vehicle so we could lift this in and out of cars. Make sure you bend your knees. And then pulling it out, it's not very easy either. Goes right in. You gotta make sure you protect your hands too, because the wheels will spin. There you go. So Andrew's gonna pick this up and try to put it on this bench without turning it off. Oh, How yeah. would you do that? It's gonna That's be the tough. Challenge. Yeah, here's the kill switch. Let me switch it to my right hand. Let's see how awkward it is. You have to push it. So you basically have to lift with three fingers and use your trigger finger to use the kill switch. Big, heavy, and that kill switch is probably in one of the worst places. Yeah, I wish you could at least press it a couple times and it would just kill the whole wheel rather than having to hold it the whole time. If they can do that with a software update, firmware update, maybe a, a triple press, three quick taps to get it to kill and then deactivate so that you can pick it up without the wheel spinning that would be marvelous. As far as one of the most expensive wheels and most refined wheels, this wheel still has some flaws that hopefully they can update over time. Andrew, what are some of these flaws? The battery isn't that big. In comparison of wheels in the past, it's pretty massive, but for how much power this wheel is generating, we've seen reports as low as 25 miles of range if you're going balls to the walls. In this class, you usually expect more range. Some people are reporting as low as 25, 
others are reporting up to 40, even 50 miles. It all depends on the conditions, the terrain, and the, the rider. But yes, it is a big, heavy, expensive wheel. And as Andrew said, because it's so big, it'll break your back if you try to lift this up many stairs or in and out of the back of a vehicle. Compared to the Sherman, which has relatively low pedal clearance, the pedal clearance on this guy is really high. Should we bring it down and compare side by side? Heavy! Just look at the height difference on this thing. The B13 is a monster. It is so tall. When the Sherman first came out, everyone was talking about how big it was. Yeah, look at the pedal difference, pedal height difference. And with the pedal height, because it's so tall, stepping off it, especially when you have to emergently step off your wheel, just realize if you have a bad knee or a bad ankle, it may put additional strain stepping off and on this electric unicycle. And then, ooh, just stepping off this wheel. That's a tall step, you see that? Yeah. That is a tall step down. <laughs> but you get used to over you get used to it over time. Woo! High pedal clearance is always gonna be troublesome for people trying to learn how to ride an electric unicycle. So this is definitely more of an advanced and expert wheel. It's not easy to change the suspension on the go. You have to carry a tool with you. It's small. It's a little confusing if you don't know what you're doing. Trying to get this plastic piece off or this rubber piece off is a pain in the butt. I have to take off my wrist guards and my gloves. Not easy to do with gloves on. Then you have to adjust these dials, which don't really tell you what they do or don't do. No visual feel and no tactile feel. Sometimes these other suspensions offer little clicks that you can hear or feel to know how far you've gone. That rubber piece is easily lost. And in addition, there's this another piece on the bottom. This is so easy to just turn. Could easily fall off and get lost. These caps, if you ride hard and aggressively, they can shake out. And so under it is where you put the air for the suspension. So some would say that's kind of an exposed, vulnerable location. It could get knocked or hit by rocks, debris, you know, with the suspension moving up and down. So you can potentially damage the only place where you can put that air into the suspension system. One other thing is the light is super bright, but you can't adjust the angle. I like at nighttime to be able to go a little bit lower, maybe a little bit higher, depending on where I'm riding and what type of terrain I'm riding. For those that love seated riding, this is a fantastic seated riding wheel, just because it's so tall and the top is flat and it's pretty much featureless except for that trolley handle. It would be perfect for a seat to come with this to put on here to ride. For how much you're paying, unfortunately, you're not getting a seat. And so that's kind of a bummer. You've got a lot of the wheels in this similar class that have their seats built in. It makes it easier for folks that like to ride seated. The seat should just come standard with this. Sitting on this without a seat is just awful. For how much you're paying, you should at least be able to get a seat as a consolation prize. Yes, there have been mishaps along the way, such as the reported soft bolts on early models. And I expect there will be further mishaps along the way as more miles are put on the InMotion V13. But in motion as a good platform to build from and to improve on. Early adopters will have the joy of being one of the first in the world to experience innovative and cutting edge new technology, but they will be the first to be punished with unforeseen issues that will inevitably arise in any new product. This is the smartest electric unicycle ever made. It's got the smart BMS, it's got redundancy, it's got thicker gauge wire, it's supposedly a wheel that will not cut out. And that's how they've advertised. We're seeing cutouts on this wheel. We're seeing people riding these wheels 55 miles per hour next to pedestrians, bike riders. Yes, the marketing makes you feel confident that this wheel is not gonna cut out, but it still does happen. As technology gets smarter, we almost use that as a license to become dumber. No matter how smart, how advanced, the electric unicycle tech gets, there's still one flaw that can never be overcome, and that is it only has one wheel. Thanks for watching, guys, and when you guys ride, wear your safety gear.